Hello plant friends. Hope you guys are all doing well and staying happy and healthy out there with your loved ones. In this episode, we are going to talk about what I consider the biggest mistakes, the three biggest mistakes that people do and have with cuttings. Obviously with the insane plant prices these days, more and more people are shifting towards buying cuttings instead of, you know, whole rooted plants. And that's that's fine. There's there's really nothing wrong with that. A lot of plants do really really well um, coming you know as cuttings and and growing as cuttings. And actually, there are quite a few plants that I recommend people buy as cuttings um, to save money. Um, but you know there are some pitfalls that some people do. So I hope this episode will be helpful to you, especially you know as a new plant plant parent, you know getting into cuttings and and getting into propagation. So so let's just um, let's just start. I have cuttings, all right. So here's here's an example, right? So so these cuttings have been in this jar, um, you know, rooting in water for I would say, like probably like three or four months. Uh, the water is cloudy or murky and not very clean, just because I haven't really changed the water in at least two to three months. Quite a few roots in there, and is you know these plants are probably ready to go into soil, but I've just been sort of lazy about it. And in this pot or in this jar are Addisonii or Monstera Addisonii cuttings and also some Syngonium cuttings. All right, so let's just get started about the, the biggest mistakes that I see people have when getting cuttings like these. The cuttings are too small, right? That's, that's the first mistake that I feel people have. And let, let me use this example as uh, what I mean by it's too small. So this this little thingy or cutting <laughs> is, uh, I think this is also Monster Addisonii. So this cutting, like most of my cuttings, has, has two nodes. Nodes are where the roots are coming from. And so that means that every node you have is an opportunity for successful rooting. Right, so one node, one opportunity, two nodes, two opportunities. I like more opportunities, so I always do at least two nodes. Um, I know that nowadays a lot of people are just doing like one node cuttings. Uh, you know, if that's if that's what you want to do, or you know, risk doing, or if that's what your budget affords, I I totally understand that. I would recommend that you have you know you have some space around. Uh, the node, okay? This specimen has an example of why I recommend having good spaces, uh, a good you know distance between the nodes or around the node that you're buying, uh, is because this side has rotted, right? This whole thing, um, this whole part of the stem has, has rotted. And this was what was, you know, sitting in, in water. Um, so rot is definitely a possibility. And then the other, I'm not sure if this focuses, um, but this this part up here has dried up, right? It has shriveled up and dried up. So that's why is that, you know, if you're buying a cutting like this, what you're really getting is sort of just like a cutting that's like this, a viable, good tissue for you. Because um, especially if you're buying a cutting that's really, really fresh, just know that the ends are either gonna have some rot or you know dry up and your overall healthy live specimen is going to be a little shorter than what you're buying obviously if you're buying a node cutting that you know that uh, has already dried up at the ends then you know then that's less of an issue for you to worry about but if your cutting is ultra fresh uh, then know that some drying or some rot is is in your future <laughs> Okay, my second uh, mistake that I feel that people make is that they're they're buying the wrong types of plants, right? And I say this because there are some plants that are much easier to propagate as cuttings um, or grow as cuttings than others. Like I have in this jar, right? Monstera Addisonii, super, super easy. Uh, uh, Syngonium, right? Syngonium's a weed in a lot of countries, right? So super, super easy. They grow super, super well. Um, a common plant, let me see, like a like a pothos. Pothos of any variety tend to be very, very easy to buy as cuttings and propagate and root and grow as cuttings. Um, so you know, if you're not familiar or you're you know you're starting out or you know you're not comfortable, buy plants that are easier to grow as cuttings. Um, and I think a general rule is that if it vines, it's fine. If it vines, it's fine. Um, if 
a lot of viney plants uh, tend to do really well as cuttings. Yeah, that's sort of what I've, I've you know, learned and that's sort of what I have uh, as, uh, you know, my general guideline. Uh, so, yeah, Monstera edisonii, vines, right? Syngonium, I think, sort of vines-ish, right? Pothos, vines. A lot of viney plants do really well as cuttings. Um, and those are the plants that I recommend people sort of get as cuttings. In terms of Monstera, I find that, like, older Monstera, like, like if you're talking about, like, a big... Um, like a big trunk of any plant, I find that those tend to be a little bit harder uh, to uh, root and propagate from a cutting. Um, so yeah, stick to like a little bit younger, more adolescent, smaller, vinier plants. <laughs> so uh, the third mistake that I feel that people do, and this is a mistake that I definitely do, um, I don't give my plants enough humidity. Cuttings tend to need a little bit more, if not a lot more, humidity. Like when you're getting a cutting like this, or when you're buying a cutting like this, that has either no roots or very minimal roots, like what are the roots there for, right? The roots are there for um, intake of water, right? It keeps your plants hydrated. Um, so without the roots, what you're doing is that your plants on like a, a ticking time clock, right? Because dehydration is happening constantly, right? Whereas hydration is severely, severely limited. Um, so, you know, you can't really do too much for the hydration part, right? You kind of just have to wait till your plant starts developing roots, right? But for the dehydration part, you can really minimize that by providing a more humid environment for your plant, right? For your cutting. It's, it's more life support, right? You're, you're, by providing more humidity, you're, you're decreasing the the rate of water loss from your plant. And, you know, there are several ways that people do this. Some people just, you know, crank up the humidity. Uh, some people have, um, you know, they, they keep their rooting plants or propagation in a, a container, you know, that, you know, has some moist moss or something, right? Some people do that, or a, a container that has more uh, humidity than average. Uh, some people do, uh, they they cover their pots or container, you know, with a plastic wrap, right? So, so that way it, it keeps the humidity in there, right? Okay, so those those are the biggest mistakes that uh, I see people have. To summarize, right, one is that their cutting is too small, and they're not having that many chances of success or for success. The other is that they're just you know they're picking plants that are harder to propagate or harder to grow from a cutting than others. And then the third mistake is that their, their humidity is too low, right? Their humidity uh, might be fine for a plant that has active roots that are, that is actively hydrating their plant. Um, but, uh, you know, but for a plant that's not actively hydrating, um, the humidity is too low to keep that plant long enough for the roots to come out. All right, uh, so that's it for this episode. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you like the shirt, uh, I think it's on my Amazon shop or there's some links below for merch if you want to support the channel. And uh, right, till next time, happy planting.